Joining me now is Democratic Congresswoman Mikey Sherrill of New Jersey, a former Navy pilot and federal prosecutor. Well, Congresswoman, thank you very much. How, first of all, you come out of the military background. How concerned are you by these reports? Um, I don't believe that it's currently reported by NBC, but ABC and The New York Times that the former president allegedly discussed sensitive U.S. nuclear submarine secrets with an Australian billionaire who was just a club member down at Mar-a-Lago. And I, I think, Andrea, the reporting suggests that then that billionaire shared it with over 40 other people. Um, as a former naval officer and Russian policy officer, these are some of our most tightly held secrets when it comes to our submarine force. So to think that the former president was sharing those secrets and, and, and that is being promulgated is incredibly concerning and I think just shows if we needed any more information about it, but just shows that he's completely unfit to ever hold the office of president again. Uh, let's talk about the race for speaker as well. There's so much going up on the, on the Hill. Democratic leader Hakeem Jeffries is now calling for a bipartisan coalition. Writing in the Washington Post, we simply need Republican partners willing to break with MAGA extremism, reform the highly partisan House rules that were adopted at the beginning of this Congress, and join us in finding common ground for the people. Is there anyone currently running for speaker who would fill that bill and that Democrats could support? You know, Andrea, it's unclear. Um, that offer has, has, I think, been on the table since January, really. Um, this idea that if if Kevin McCarthy had ever wanted to turn away from the far-right extremists in his party and focus on governing and figuring out a better path forward for Congress and the country, other than implementing things like travel bans and cutting um, in, into historic deep cuts for poor children, SNAP funding and WIC funding. I, I mean, a whole host of things that he was really being led to do by MAGA extremists, um, as well as supporting uh, Trump and his ideas, supporting the big lie that the elections were stolen, allowing the far-right extremists to move forward on an impeachment inquiry, even though they had not presented evidence that there was wrongdoing by the president. All these things are so bad for our institutions, our democratic institutions. We even heard from the former standard bearer of the Republican Party, Mitt Romney, that he thinks a large portion of his party does not believe in the Constitution. We need leadership on the Republican side of the aisle um, that is going to put the country and our values before the far-right extremists. And how concerned are you about Republican opposition to the Ukraine war funding? Um, but as far as the Ukrainian war funding, I'm really incredibly concerned. Uh, this is something that, as you know, Republicans in the Senate, Democrats in the Senate, Democrats in the House, and a majority, this sometimes gets lost, a majority of Republicans in the House seem to be behind this idea that we really need to continue to support uh, the democratic uh, work that the Ukrainians are doing to fight for their democracy against Russia and Putin, who has long been an adversary of the United States and has a worldview contrary to ours. So this is incredibly important, and, and I'm very concerned about the path forward. Um, we know how important it is. We know that the Ukrainian military is doing, doing well and making progress, but that will end if we cannot continue our support. And turning to New Jersey and to Senator Menendez, now there's a new report. The New York Times is reporting that the New Jersey State Attorney General is opening an inquiry into whether the Bergen County law enforcement officials properly investigated a fatal crash involving the then girlfriend, now wife, Nadine Menendez, um, after she struck and killed a pedestrian in her car in 2018. Uh, where do you stand on that? So, um, I, you know, as I have said, Andrew, I think it's time for Senator Menendez to resign. I'm concerned about his access to information as someone on the Foreign Affairs Committee and as a member of the Senate. We know that he, you know, he's accused of sharing sensitive information with the Egyptian government. I, I do think um, there's very concerning things in the indictment, although 
Of course, as a former federal prosecutor, I believe he has the right to stand before a jury of his peers. That does not, there's no entitlement to sit as senator in the United States Senate. And I do think it's time that he resigned from that position.